Good day, students. So today we're going to continue talking about inequalities. Um, you should have either in class or watch the previous video on the introduction to inequalities. So as a quick reminder, inequalities are problems that have more than one answer or solution. So instead of our variable representing one exact number, like it did in an equation, this is going to represent a set of numbers or what we call the set of solutions. So we use an example of getting a certain grade in science. So if you got an A, in science, there's a variety of different answers that could fit that particular variable, right? An A could be a 90, a 93, a 95, a 100, and so forth. So we talked about how these greater than, less than, uh, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to symbols can represent um, solution sets. Uh, and we also talked about how we can graph all of the numbers that fit the inequality on a number line. And we designated that open dots means we include uh, the number, um, or I'm sorry, open dots mean we don't include the number. Closed dots mean we do include the number. So if you um, don't really know what I'm talking about, I highly suggest you go back and watch the introduction to inequalities video. Um, I linked a few other videos that you can watch in the description bar to kind of get a good understanding. Today's video will be much shorter because now that we kind of are introduced to inequalities, I'm going to show you some examples of how we solve them. So um, the examples that I gave you in the last video, the inequality was essentially essentially already set up. We were able to figure out what the solution set was just from the information given. Sometimes though, it's gonna be more of a puzzle. So you'll notice we have inequalities here. And the reason why we can tell these are inequalities and not equations is because they have the greater than and less than and equal to symbols. They do not have just equal signs. If they only had equal signs, then they would be equations. That's a big difference. Remember equations have equal signs. So if I am trying to figure out the value of these variables, the variables in these equations are going to represent more than one number. Because instead of just saying x plus 4 equals 16, if I did that, x could only be one number. There's only one number when I add it to 4 that makes 16. But in this case, it says x plus 4. There we go x plus 4 is less than 16. So there are a lot of numbers if we add them to 4 that it could be less than 16. It could be a bunch of different whole numbers, but also like even decimals or fractions. Like if I added one half to four, that's just four and a half. Four and a half is less than 16. I could add a negative number, like negative one plus four would make three. Three is less than 16. So there's so many possibilities. So we're going to solve our inequalities like we would equations, but instead of saying our variable is equal to one exact number, we're gonna use the greater than and less than symbols to represent the set of solutions, all of the possible numbers that our variable could be equal to. So the nice thing about how to solve inequalities is we just solve them like equations. That's all we have to do. Um, Cause they look a little intimidating, but we really just have to solve them like equations. We're gonna use the properties of equality to solve for the set of solutions. Um, so I'm going to use my properties of equality, my APO, DPO, SPO, and et cetera, to solve for the set of solutions. But then I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to represent the set of solutions on a number line by graphing the inequality. So let's start with this example that I've kind of already mentioned. We have X plus four is less than 16. So since I am adding in my inequality, I am going to use the subtraction property of equality to subtract four from both sides. I'm going to label ESPO. Um, it's always good practice when we're learning something new to label your properties of equality. So that way it's easier to see. So if I subtract four from both sides, I am left with X is less than 16 minus four is going to be 12. So instead of X being equivalent, sorry, it keeps refocusing. I just don't want it to be blurry. Um, so instead of X being equivalent to 12, this is saying X can be any number. It just has to be less than 12. It can't be equal to 12 because 12 plus 14 is going to make 16 and there's no equal to sign here. So it has to be less than 12. So it could be like 11.9999999999999. And that would work, but anything that is less than 12. So let's represent it on our number line. So if we want to represent all the numbers that are less than 12, we would shade this part of the number line. And we do not want to include 12 because it is the less than symbol. So we're going to use an open dot on 12 to show we want any number that we're going to look at 12, but it has to be 
less than 12. We're not going to include 12 in our set of solutions. Um, so you'll notice all we did was use the ESPO property in order to figure out all the possible values for X. Okay, let's look at the second problem. We have 4X plus 6 is greater than, that symbol is a little weird looking, there we go, uh, greater than or equal to 22. So I'm going to look at my problem and solve it like an equation. I am adding the constant. I want to get rid of the constant first. So I'm going to use the subtraction property of equality, the ESPO property to solve. And so I will be left with 4X is greater than or equal to 22 minus 6 is going to be 16. And then if I look at it, I have 4X is greater than or equal to 16. I am multiplying over here. So I want to use the division property of equality to solve. I'm going to use the depot property. So when I divide, I will be left with X is greater than or equal to 16 divided by 4. Or yeah, 16 divided by 4 is 4. So X can be any number. It has to just be greater than or equal to four. And if I go back and plug in four, four times four is 16. 16 plus six is equal to 22. And then if I picked a number that's bigger, like if I picked five, four times five is 20. 20 plus six is 26. 26 is greater than 22. So you see all those values um, for X, as long as they're equal to or greater than four work. So now let's represent this on the number line. So if I am trying to show anything that is equal to four, I'm going to use the close dot, but it has to be greater than four. So I'm going to shade the side of the number line that shows all the numbers that are greater than four. Because I could pick like 4.01 and go plug that in and I would get something that's greater than 22. All right, let's look at the last one. We have 5x is less than or equal to 30. So in order to solve this problem, Multiplication is happening between the coefficient and the variable. So I am going to use the depot property to undo the inequality. And I'm left with X is less than or equal to 30 divided by 5 is 6. So X is going to be less than or equal to 6. So X can be any number. It just has to be less than or equal to 6. And to represent that set of solutions on the number line, I am going to place 6. And then I want to show anything that is less than or equal to it. So since it's equal to it, I'm going to put a closed dot on my number line. And then anything that is less than six, I'm going to shade that side of the number line. This shows all the numbers that are less than or equal to six. So you'll notice there's not really a huge trick to solving inequalities. You're going to use the same property of inequalities to solve um you're going to use the same properties of equality to solve inequalities. How many times can I say equality or equation or whatever in this video? Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you something weird that kind of happens with inequalities. It has to do with negatives. Um, and it's just kind of a, a, a rule that we have to remember when we solve them. But for the most part, you're going to work them just like you would an equation. So here are your practice problems. Um, I would like for you in these practice problems to please solve and graph them. So find the set of solutions. So X greater than, less than, you know, whatever. And then also graph or represent that solution set on a number line. So your three problems are 2X plus four is less than or equal to 28. 12X plus X is greater than 39. 4X plus 10 is greater than or equal to 90. You can check your answers for the solution sets in um, the table of contents. If you want to see what a graph looks like, I would encourage you to come bring uh, your notebook to your teacher to check to see if you graphed the inequality correctly. Um, but as always, we're here to help you and answer any questions. If you're still struggling with inequalities, please make sure you go back and watch the introduction video. Um, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye.